Oh, hey, it's great. Blessed to have you. Hey, everybody. Welcome. And uh, I'm pleased to have what I consider to be one of the more special shows I've ever had. Uh, first of all, the man to my immediate uh, right, Casey Pratt, is the sports uh, director, ABC, and he is uh, a counterpart. Well, not a counterpart, but a friend and a colleague of my good friend, Larry Beal. Uh, yep. He said hi, I, by the way, Zenny. Tell him I'm sorry about the Hope solo bet because I'm sorry I didn't win. But it, <laughs> don't be, okay, I should have won it. <laughs> uh, but uh, Casey is uh, has done some incredible work, and I want to just Richard Hake is our Zenny Sixty Media uh, vlogger specializing in the A's, and then Andy Dolich is our executive par excellence with the Warriors, the uh, A's the um, Memphis Grizzlies and, and, and the Washington uh, Capitals and the San Francisco 49ers and the Maryland Arrows and the Washington Diplomats and fan controlled sports and entertainment and a friend of Elihu Harris, uh, a mayor who got things done. Right. And when I was economic uh, advisor. That's all that to me. The yeah. Absolutely. So, and, and yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, you had brilliant economic advisors in Zenny um, without you. doubt. Thank you. I much appreciate it. Casey, I want to show everybody this. I want to say uh, <laughs> congratulations on uh, what everybody's about to see. Because I thought this was cool. This happened a few years ago, but this is massively cool. Look at this. ABC 7 President and General Manager Tom Sobrowski presented sports producer Casey Pratt with the Disney ABC Television Group MVP Award for the month of August. It's the first time an ABC 7 employee has ever received this award, which is selected among the thousands of employees in the company. Casey is the behind-the-scenes force of nature who leads our sports department. He writes, edits, and produces original content for our newscast and for all of the digital platforms as well. It's a well-deserved honor for a hardworking and truly special person. Congratulations. We here at ABC7 like are celebrating a massively cool. So I want to say oh, well, thank you, Zenny. That was a great way to welcome you aboard. And hey, you know, that was cool. That was cool. That's like, it's great to see somebody who does great work celebrated for it when they're doing the work at the at the job, you know? So that that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So uh, on the, from that great high note, we come now to the conversation regarding the Oakland Athletics in Oakland with respect to Howard Terminal. And the way we set this up is Casey's a sports journalist. We've got Richard, who's vlogged about it and, and uh, has he is our first person to really vlog in a style that I pioneered. And uh, he just got it and started going. He's really saved my tail a lot of times. Andy and Elihu, seriously, Andy and Elihu uh, are the other stars because, well, they were for the grid old days regarding the athletics and sports in general in Oakland. So I'm going to start, first of all, with Casey. And I want to say to Casey, Casey, give us your view about where the athletics are um, with respect to the Howard Terminal in Oakland and then also your thoughts on Las Vegas. Yeah, I mean, right now, I would say, and you'd probably agree, they're stuck in the mud right here in Oakland. They, they got the deal about as far as they could stomach it, and now I think what they're doing is kind of holding up. They know where it's at, and they're just going to dig, dig, dig into Las Vegas and just put everything they have into finding out whether or not Las Vegas will pony up the enough amount of money, I guess, for them to to want to jump over there. But I think if they flop in Vegas with everything they're trying right now, then they at least know what they have in Oakland and they can finally say, all right, fine, maybe we'll we'll bridge the gap or we'll we'll get this thing done here. Casey, you talk to fans a lot. And what are the fans collectively saying to you about what's happening and how how do you think they're handling the fan issue fan issue? I I mean, okay, so the fans are concerned, and rightfully so. Uh, I think that with every twist and turn of the saga, uh, everybody panics. And because they don't want to lose the team in the Bay Area that they grew up rooting for, that a lot of people are bonded by. I know, Richard, I see your jacket. I'm sure you and I could talk A's for four straight hours if we just met each other. Easily. Uh, And I think everyone's afraid they're going to lose that, and, and rightfully so. And I don't think the A's are handling the fan aspect well. I think right now the A's as a franchise aren't handling 
really anything very well. And then that's a concern for me too. And that starts ownership and goes all the way down. And Casey, how would you, if someone tomorrow said, you are the president of the athletics, <laughs> what would your first move be after having dinner with John Fisher? I would think. You know, the issue is if I was the president of the athletics, I'd still have to answer to the owner of the athletics. And the owner of the athletics seems like he doesn't want to jump in or commit. Uh, he's been non-committal here. He's been non-committal in Vegas. So I don't know if I would do <laughs> anything that Cavill hasn't done because he's at the mercy of the ownership group. What I would do is good something that he actually did a really good job jumping in with when he first got here and engage the fans, re-engage the fans, make sure that they're informing people about what's going on. I think that's the number one thing from, from a media standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, PR, fans, engagement has not been there lately. Hey, Richard, I want yeah. Can you off with uh, Casey had said from a fan point of view, you know, what are your thoughts? Just in brief so we can get to our, our, our big kahunas later. I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there was something that cut out there. Uh, what was your okay. question? What, from uh, from a fan standpoint, right. and your thoughts regarding what State Space Casey was saying regarding how the athletics are treating their fans like yourself? Oh, it's, you know? it's, it's been it's been a kick in the teeth for the last couple seasons. Um not not just me, but uh, other fans that I, I I I do hang out with and sometimes travel with and stuff. Uh, we we've all kind of felt like we we've gotten a raw deal. You know, we went from you know these 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 great ticketing and uh, marketing uh, event avenues that they did have uh, everything from from their their season ticket the the the, the A's access, which for most of us thought we, this was the greatest thing ever uh, that we've seen in any sport, whether it was baseball, football, soccer, hockey, you know, um, that was a great thing. And, and, and then that was just taken away. And then suddenly, you know, Oh, you want to be a season ticket holder here, double the price. Uh, and Oh, by the way, you don't get any benefit to this. You don't, you know, there's, there were, there was, that was like, wow. Okay. And then it just like kept going down. Like the, the bar kept coming lower. You know, I, I remember just going to games last season and just wanting to eat something at a game. And you only had really a couple of vendors to look forward to. Uh, and then you only had like, you know, hot dog, hamburger, nachos or pizza. That was it. You know, you don't really have a whole lot, um, you know, before where you had, you know, barbecue and, um, you know, some Asian food or you're know, just just different things. You know, you can get corn dogs or. Uh, you can, there was a, there was a guy selling uh, boba drinks, you know, behind uh, <laughs> over by like the Seagate or something like that. It was you know there were options before, and e even like the food truck roundup is uh, it, it got down to like one or two trucks, and you're just like oh. Um, towards the end, I, I started to see kind of an uptick. There was actually a really cool moment uh, that I, I I believe I vlogged it. Um, you did. Where there was actually a band playing. Uh, doing cover songs towards the end of the season. Um, and uh, I was like, oh, this is really cool, you know, because um, I'd seen stuff like that in other ballparks. And uh, that was the first time I'd really seen something like that in Oakland. But, yeah, I, to, to, to shorten this up, yeah, uh, there, there really hasn't been much outreach. And everything, it seems like, uh, especially in the last two years, has just been just like a, 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 a sticky, you know, everything from that, that tweet from the uh, Vegas Knights game, um, you know, and it just, from there, it just seemed like tone deaf, you know, uh, jabs at fans. And he's like, wow, do we matter anymore? Hey, for the record, I reached out to Dave Cobble and asked and invited him to be on this show. I think, I don't know how many times I've sent him a, either a text or an email. Casey, how many times have you tried to get Dave? <laughs> it's not happening, Zenny. It's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> Did he tell you that? He said, not happening. <laughs> He just, no he one's just talking, I, you know, and that's that's yeah. the thing, Zenny, and, and not to make belabor the point, but, you know, it's one thing if the owner, John Fisher, doesn't want to talk, but then when Dave Cavill also doesn't want to talk, then then what? I mean, we need some answers. Yeah, and what, what I just say this, I'm going to get to Andy and L.U., but uh, Catherine Aker, the outstanding uh, represent, communication representative for the team, uh, sent me an email on the 6th of December saying, Hey, Zinni, we're going to get to you. Sit tight. <laughs> I'm still sitting. <laughs> Mr. Dolich, you've heard all of this. And so, uh, first of all, great to have you back here. And uh, 
But what are your thoughts regarding how the athletics are handling uh, the fans in this instance and everything else? First of all, it's great to be with all of you today. Great to see you, Elihu. Um, teamwork, leadership, and trust. Zenny, you and I have talked about this before. If you don't have that in any business, you have nothing. And I would say that there's a massive failure of teamwork, leadership, and trust. And let's throw in the A's, John Fisher, Dave Cavill, Rob Manfred, uh, some other owners in Major League Baseball, elected officials, city, county, business leaders. You do not have a strategic plan that makes any sense to anybody that's trying to follow this. You talked about having a difficult time, Casey and Zenny, getting Dave on. And Dave is very, uh, very enthusiastic, a terrific spokesperson for the team. When is the last time that the owner of the team, even though it's a private entity, um, it is a public entity. John Fisher has not talked for 18 years. 18 years. He's not given one interview as to why he owns this team. And, you know, Richard really hit the spot. Um, I have high regard for A's fans. I spent 14 years of my life, along with a lot of other terrific people during the Haas ownership, trying to build the franchise back from how Charlie Finley let it go after those great teams that he had, three consecutive World Series. And for this particular point, I will say 2 million fans. Now you'd go, Andy, what does 2 million fans mean? The A's attendance last year was 787,000. That's what the A's said. Was it? Not even close, in my humble opinion. The year before, 701,000. The year before, we had a pandemic. We had an attendance of nothing. I understand that. And then you look at a number of years, 2,001,000, 2,005,000, 2,007,000, 2,009,000. The A's fans from all over Northern California, not just Oakland, said, John Fisher, you want me to give you $35 to park, to give you $10 to buy a beer, to give you $35 to buy a T-shirt? I, as an A's fan, am not stupid. You tell me why I should pay good money when you do not care about me. And I give the A's fans, because it's hard to say goodbye to your team, right, Richard? Really hard. Oh, absolutely. We've already done it with the Raiders. And, and, and even though the Warriors just moved across the bay after 386 consecutive sellouts, um, it, it is the fans telling ownership, you do not have a plan that makes any strategic sense to us. And if you want to go play in a convertible dome ballpark in Las Vegas – that nobody has been willing to pay for yet, and you do not have an actionable land deal with any of these multiple locations you're talking about, and you've been given permission two years ago by Major League Baseball to go, then go. Because a $12 billion new urban ballpark city in Howard Terminal, call me and I'll buy a suite for each one of you when we go to opening night on the 12th of never at Howard Terminal. <laughs> well said. Boss Elihu, from a standpoint of a uh, former mayor, work with the Haas family, how would you compare the Haas family to John Fisher, Wally Haas and John Fisher? Well, there's no comparison. That doesn't take a lot of time. Um, here's the bottom line for me. Uh, the, the, since in the post antitrust era, the only ownership who had been focused on the team and the fans and holistic connection between the two has been the Haas family. Uh, Walter Haas didn't do the A's so much as a business enterprise as he did uh, a, a sense of trust. Uh, there was a loyalty to the fans. Uh, he could have done other things. He, could have sold, he sold it for less that he could have because he wanted to keep it in open. Uh, nobody before or since has had that level of loyalty to the city or to the fans. Now, Elio, just one you. second. I'm a serial interrupter, but it's very important to underline what Elio just said. These are private entities, but the Haas family and other owners in sports viewed it as a public entity where the fans owned it with their heart and soul. 
and that has been right. lost under John Fisher. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, Fisher, I mean, it started with, what was the guy, the predecessor uh, to the Fisher? Uh, uh, Ken Hoffman Wolf, and Wolf, Steve Shaw. Lou Wolf. Lou Wolf. Lou Wolf. Lou Wolf. Lou Wolf. Yeah. Lou Wolf. Wolf. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the point about it is, here's what I believe. And I, I really wanted Andy to come before Andy, because I think Andy's the one who really kind of say whether that the city makes sense, any sense. But first of all, there's no real leadership in the city of Oakland when it comes to any of this. There's no understanding. Uh, you know, before, even though I was grudgingly dealing with him half the time with Casson, I mean, Casson really thought Colise was his fiefdom, if you will. So we had to get on the same page. Uh, we often weren't. Uh, friendly, we were all friendly, but he was trying to make sure that the, uh, the Coliseum uh, was his domain. And as a result, when I tried to get the Warriors, for example, to move downtown to a downtown arena, he blocked it by telling uh, the uh, uh, Gerald that it wasn't safe downtown, even though uh, his uh, the co-owner had been interested in moving, saw it, saw it as a great place next to Bart, everything was close. I couldn't make the deal. Here's what it comes to the Warriors. I believe this, that the Fish family only see the Warriors as an asset. They don't see any loyalty to the fan, to the city, even to the, to the region. Um, and then ultimately, they want to sell the team. And they want to cut a deal that love the team to the highest bidder, whether it's somebody wants to keep it open, somebody wants to move it to Vegas, or somebody wants to move it to uh, Nashville. Uh, they're just looking for, for a deal. And as soon as they get a deal, with this complete with the city or Vegas or Nashville, they can say, hey, we'll send to whoever's gonna give us most money, and that one wants to take the team to wherever they want to take it. I don't know anybody because of what they've done with the team, running in the ground, not have any fan base because they don't invest in the team. Uh look, I, I, they're like a minor league team in a major league ballpark, and they want to build a new stadium. Uh that nobody knows who's playing for the A's. I couldn't tell you. Five people that are playing for the A's. And 10 years ago, five years ago, I could name at least 20 people playing for the A's. Pitchers, catchers, outfielders. I knew the players. You can't tell the players without a scorecard now for the A's. How are you going to have investment or loyalty in a team that has people you don't even know, have any idea who they are, who's going to show up on opening day? So there's nothing about this that gives me a sense that there's any real future for the A's of Oakland. And I think the lack of investment, of the lack of sustaining great players who the fans love, who they love to see, who gave you a good game, whether they won or they lost, they throw it in the towel. I think it's only a matter of time unless something changes or some owner who wants to keep the team in Oakland steps up and says, hey, I'll give you whatever it is that you want, and I'll take over the deal from here. They're not going to make a deal. Hey, boss, I got to ask you, and then I want to get Casey involved in this one, too. What do you think of how Mayor Tao has handled this matter, even though she's only but a month and a week into the job? You know, even but she's also been our district four council member before. She's on the city council. She's been on the mm -hmm. council for four years. She knows the deal. But it's about leadership. It's about, look, I, the fact that I have people like Ann. Andy and Lee Steinberg and others who not, knew a lot more about sports than I did. You know, you got to get people who understand what you're really dealing with, understand what the deal points are, and what you can either do or can't do. You know, I mean, I did some things with the Raider deal that I wish I hadn't done, but, you know, I, we, the, everybody wanted them. But the one thing you learn as a politician, there are more people that read the uh, uh, front page than the sports page. And you're going to get criticized for any athletic deal where they think that you gave too much up. And the Raiders got a lot. I mean, Al Davis is Al, listen, when Al Davis and uh uh Joe Aliotto came to my office, they looked like two sharks circling. I said it before. <laughs> that was the serious time I've ever had in my life. I they, they were they were smiling, and all I could see was their teeth. It looked like I was gonna be lunch. <laughs> you know, as as Elliot said, just one real point here, and I do not know the new mayor. But I know that she was um, at a National Council of Mayors meeting in D.C. Just happened to be the day that the Warriors were at the White House. She was there. I take nothing away from that. That was very cool. But I'm an East Coaster. 
And to this day, Rob Manfred and the mayor said they have never spoken. Uh, are you kidding me? Madam Mayor, you're in Washington, D.C. You get on Amtrak and you go to Park Avenue and you right. set an appointment with Rob Manfred. For her not to do that was right. mind boggling to me. Um, you were there. You have to show that leadership that uh, Elliot just talked about. This is hand to hand combat. And you may be in office when you're 0 for 3. Now, Libby has to take some of this. But no American city with three teams on one 155 acre footprint will lose all of it, never to see another one of those teams at 66th Avenue again. Casey, you interviewed Chang twice, right? Well, the, I did a really long interview with her, if you remember. Um, and, you know, when I talked to all the mayoral candidates that I spoke with, I spoke to the three on city council, Treva Reed. Uh, Lauren Taylor, Shang Tao. I remember being blown away by Shang Tao, actually. I thought she was extremely well-versed. I, I was really impressed with her takes on all the Howard Terminal and Oakland A's baseball situations. So <laughs> I don't know what changed or if anything changed, but since she's taken office, I'd have to give her a grade of incomplete so far because th there's really not a lot of communication coming out of there since that point. And understandably, she's getting elected. She's getting her team put together. But like Andy said, you know, having not spoken with the Major League Baseball commissioner, and sure, he shares a whole lot of that blame too, Andy. I'm not saying that, that it's totally all. I totally agree her, with you, Casey. But it's black. That was stunning to me. And trust. Yeah. yeah, I was shocked. I just think that right now it's it's a bit disorganized. There's a lack of communication. And I think that if they're going to pull this off, um, there's going to need to be more of that. On the other hand, too, now let's again not put it all on her. The A's have to be willing to play ball too. And we don't really have much indication that they have any interest in Oakland at the moment because they're spending all their time in Vegas. That in itself is a problem. So it's almost like a, a blame hot potato. Somebody made that reference a while ago, and I, I, it's so prescient with this ballpark sog. It's almost like everyone's trying to pass the blame to somebody else. Hey, Zenny, can you, can you help the audience and help me? The Howard Terminal parking lot, the staging area for all those 18-wheelers, isn't there a, an okay that they can actually build on that site at Howard, or is that still a question mark? No, they can. I mean, it's 55 acres, and you need – Here's the more important question is, have they calculated what the unsecured property value would be? Now, a lot of people know about assessed value, right? But as one who've done, who's done – excuse me uh, – tax and financing calculations for 37 years, you also have to calculate – vehicles, and other items that are not affixed to a property. And so the luxury that was missed by not partnering with the maritime people was being able to say, we'll have a new truck stop. We'll have all these new trucks coming in. Because when I hear that, I think the first thing that goes through my head is this, cha-ching, 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 money, right? And you have uh, the sixth most active port in the United States, correct? That is flowing right. millions, right. hundreds of millions of dollars. All of that unsecured property gets counted. The leases get counted as well, okay? And so the city didn't do it correctly. The A's didn't know how to do it. So it was like the blind leading the blind. And, you know, the people that have done it, who can do it in their sleep, you know, I created, as Elihu knows, the Coliseum Redevelopment Survey Area. Uh, calculations way back in 1987. I can go on. I'm going to clip myself right there. My point is, you know, because I have an opinion, I have an immediate company, I stated there, people, they don't want to call on me. Well, you know, boo hoo hoo for the ego. And I, but I say that for this really concrete reason. A lot of people who've done what I've done in the Oakland context have died. <laughs> okay. Died. I'm not laughing at that, but no, it is funny. Around. I mean, it's not funny if they're dead. Ezra, rest in peace, is my boss. I, I learned what I learned from him. You know, this isn't something you go to school for. All right, you should. But my point is, at a time we all need to come together, like we're coming together here, um, the city doesn't do it. And the A's do it only with respect to their consultants. Is there it's a Howard Terminal? stadium task force of the best and brightest? No. no. Elliot, wouldn't you have put together either. a task force of something yeah. this large, right? Well, first of all, I, I would think more of a joint communication 
between the A's. If they really wanted to build a stadium, let's get together, figure out what, what does it take to make it work, uh, make it fan friendly, make transportation work, uh, you know, to, to build a neighborhood around the stadium. One of the primary financial incentives is to make that a neighborhood, make that the whole Jacqueline Square, you know, power terminal and all that area. Really great commercial redistricting uh, uh, communication that a plan. No, I've never seen them. That might I've be. Lost, I've lost the last sentence or two of what the mayor said. I've never seen a plan. I don't. I don't know that there's a. Plan. Can you hear me? You hear yeah, me? we can yeah. hear you. Yeah. You hear me? I think Ellie, you talk so fast I, that you talk into your mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Strategy, strategy, I, I don't, I don't strategy. strategy. Yeah, no strategy, no plan. I can't operate without a strategy. Where are we trying to go? You know, the idea of running around track, getting nowhere first is what you do when you run the 440. You also, it's not a marathon, it's not a hundred yard dash, but you got to have a destination. And if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Yeah, I want to hear, Casey, from your point of view, what do you think of how the city has handled this situation? Also, Richard. Well, I mean, it's hard to – you have two different administrations now um, that are, I guess, taking over what was done previously. But I think between the city, the port, who did a lot of heavy lifting, clearing that port priority use area to answer Andy's question, yes, they can build there. That is being challenged, though. Uh, right. in the courts, of course, uh, but they do have the port priority use area designation cleared so they can actually build on that port property. Um, I think the city did a really good job. In fact, Zenny, you probably remember this, when Dave was like everywhere and speaking all over the place and and then the, the Las Vegas tweet happened and there's there was some, some blowback there, the big showdown in July over the uh, term sheet, et cetera. What yep. you saw after that was was – Mayor Schaff and the city really stepped up the communication level and said, hey, we need to kind of be the ones to explain everything and to get the information out and make sure everybody knows what direction this is, because the combativeness uh, early on really rubbed a lot of people on the council the wrong way. Um, so once that communication started, I think this whole process got a lot smoother and they carried this thing. I mean, the A's did a lot of good work. Let's give them credit. The city did a lot of good work. The port stepped up, did a lot of good work. They got the, the EIR certified. They got the port priority use cleared. I mean, a lot of things that I think a lot of people thought probably were never going to happen, they got there. They got as far as they've ever been to getting a new stadium built, and they did it in one of the most challenging places you could possibly do it. But then, since then, it's just been yeah. silence. Casey, I want to push back a little bit, not against you, but against this idea that the city did it right because – Dave had his press conference when he first became president. Uh, and then we set up a meeting by phone on the 4th of April of 2017 at four o'clock in the afternoon. And I told him, I said, you're going to have to use tax increment financing because you needed to build affordable housing. And Dave said, you can't use public money. I said, yes, you can. SB 628 bill which is now the father, if you will, of all enhanced infrastructure finance and district legislation variations, is on the book. He didn't even know about it. I sent him that. David didn't even know about the 2010 Gruen and Gruen study, which had four, not three, four different types. How about that? Four, three, four different types of or versions of tax increment calculations. I sent him that too. He took the whole kit and caboodle, got together with Nancy Skinner's staff and created what is now called SB 293 Skinner. And the so what there is not just that it was done or signed into law by Gavin, California Governor Gavin Newsom on October 11th, 2019. But when you do that, it's kind of like that line in Crimson Tide about, you know, if you're going to blankety blank, you're going to blank, okay? If you are going to use tax increment financing, the first thing you're doing is you're signaling every other taxi agency which is a city, the county, BART, AC Transit, EB Mud, which is flood control, that, hey, you're going to take part of their tax dollars, even if it's on a little small part of land, and use it for a big project, okay? So the first thing you're supposed to do is call them. 
Instead of doing that, they never called them. And then the city made it quiet in 2019 how much money they expected to generate from tax increment. And the reason I know it is because I calculated on my own, sent it to Dave first off along with the Gruen study. And this was on the April of April 4th of 2017 and let them go with it. Okay. But Nikki Fortunato Bass had a town hall meeting that year, uh, 20th of November, 2019. I was there. Carl Chan, head of Town Town Chamber, would not let me talk about to the 90 person audience what tax increment financing was or what the calculation should be or expected and how it would be used in the parlance of SB 293 Skinner. They deliberately left them in the dark, Casey. You know what I'm saying? They deliberately. Yeah, no, you're talking about it from more of a financial aspect. When I last mentioned, I was more talking about a communication yeah, and right, organization right. standpoint. For me, Zenny, this is why I like your videos because all the financial stuff for me just. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sorry. Yeah, and so, I, I go back just it's to, political, you know? Yeah, to your <laughs> point, Zenny, and what we've I'm talked sorry. about, you know, with Richard and, and LU, teamwork, leadership, and trust. In these multiple years that the A's have been on the Bermuda Triangle cruise to a ballpark, you have seen the building of Levi's, you have seen uh, Chase Center, you have seen the magnificent of Golden One Center in Sacramento, because we're Northern California. Uh, we've seen PayPal Park. Many people aren't even aware that John Fisher owns the San Jose earthquakes. They're not aware in all places wow. that he owns the A's. And Allegiant Stadium, $1.6 billion in Vegas, a much longer deal. But all of those came from teamwork, leadership, and trust. And what do we got? What do we got? So, Andy, to make it clear, though, you would like to see Howard Terminal built, right? I would like to see the A's stay in Oakland for another 50 years. I have a very significant, outspoken feeling about the Coliseum, but John Fisher owns the team and they've taken that off the table. The A's could have already been playing in a new ballpark at the Coliseum, building retail, right. other homes Absolutely. in the in the number one transportation center in Northern California, which nobody could pay for today. $12 billion in a new urban ballpark. See, how much is Mission Bay worth? It's taken 20 some odd years. Ooh. Hey, so can I don't tell me Andy, about a $12 billion new urban ballpark city. Andy, hard stop on that. $12 billion. Okay. When Dave Cobble came out with that number, Casey, I went ballistic. I texted him. I said, look, if you're going to throw around a number like that, and that's your assessed value, you got to tell people what the tax increment throw off mm -hmm. is, which happens to be $9 billion, $9.7 billion. My point is, Casey, they, you know, the A's didn't know what they were doing, and the city didn't either. And I'm texting Libby, and I'm saying, hey, you know, this thing is out of control. All right. So what the point I'm making is to the, you know, to the, the lay person or to the, the outsiders, if you will. Right. And I'm the guy who's in the weeds or maybe I was hired by a guy like that guy to make the weeds. Right. OK. So my point <laughs> is the people who know how to make the weeds are not being called on. All right. They're not. And there and isn't one strategic plan that all of us, Richard, millions of A's fans, Casey, the mayor, Zenny, and everybody else could look at and go, you know what? That makes sense. Right. Now I want to turn back to you. And Casey, um, but I want to, because what I want to ask you this question is, okay, we all know what the problems are. What do we do to fix them? Casey, I want to go, go ahead. Yeah. The only way to fix it is the Fisher. They're on the team. They stay, they can leave. They can indicate we want to stay. Here are the four things we need. Let's make a decision. Let's not keep everybody hanging and say, well, we're looking for this. Maybe get a little more of that, you know, a little more jam, maybe some peanut butter. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll have a sandwich. Maybe we we'll won't eat today. I mean, uh, look, I have no idea. And the city council is made up of lay people. They have no idea. They're not getting any expertise from you or anybody else. They're waiting to say, are we going to vote up or down? What are we voting on? What do we get when we vote? And do we have a deal? Nobody knows. I have no idea if somebody on this on this uh, meeting or this conference or this conversation knows, tell me, because I have no idea what's actually going on. And we don't know. The average fan has no clue as to what's going on, when a decision will be made or what that decision will be. 
Well, the one thing I can say uh, before I uh, anoint this man the head of a task force to do something about this. <laughs> Would ABC let you do that? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I'm serious. Well, then he's going to be getting a Nobel Prize on the air. It's not going to be fair. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's totally fair. We can all take credit for basically lifting him up. You know, that's what people do, right? And so, so um, we, we did joke a while ago with Dave that uh, me and Larry would happily accept like one or two percent of the twelve billion dollars they're talking about. I think that would be fair. Right. I'll take that. <laughs> see, see, he's got the right idea. There you go. <laughs> yeah. it's, one, well, go ahead, go ahead, Casey. Oh, yeah, well, you you had asked, dude. Well, what would yeah. would somebody do right now? And I, I think one of the 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 things that I think really kind of slows down this process is been the adversarial attitude towards the port businesses because they've been the ones who have been driving opposition in the courts and uh, from everything that those guys say and I do have to take some of it with a grain of salt because they have been putting out misinformation um, but they say that nobody talks to them they've been left out of the the bargain ah, you're invited Mike Jacob on you're right yeah yeah much they <laughs> I'm like how much further along will this have gone had those guys been consulted and, and uh, had some sort of say uh, as to what is going on and, hey, this is how we can mitigate this and this is how we can work uh, uh, to fix that. You know, I mean, would we, would you have had maybe a partnership here where we're not looking at trying to figure out where we're gonna get another couple hundred million dollars? Maybe these guys would have said, hey, let us do our part to fix this. I don't know if that would happen. I don't think any of these big businesses want to just give out their money for something that doesn't behoove them, but it does. Because when you're adversarial like that, um, you've got, if you look at all these A's fans, they're pissed off at, e at this East Oakland Stadium Alliance, which is totally an astroturf group. Um, and now you're putting fan against fan. Now we have, we're not just going, well, we all like the A's, but so, well, what about my job? You know, uh, I, my dad's a port guy and we're three generations in and you're going to take those jobs away. And that that infighting there uh, creates problems. Um, again, the courtroom antics, basically, of, you know, trying to challenge every single thing instead of getting together and, and working together. And that's actually like, why doesn't, you know, the next person in line step up and do these things you know oh man the sun's about to be in my eyes um but you know if i was the new mayor that was what i'd be doing i'd be like hey what do we got to get you guys to do to be on board what do we got to get the a's to do what you know just like uh l hugh had said you know how do we get these people to figure out hey what needs to be done what steps do we need to take you know that task force would have been a great idea three years ago you know um there's just so much that could have been done, should have been done. We just haven't done it, you know, and, and fans are just left sitting there going, we can't do anything. We're powerless because our voice isn't being heard. And I might add to pick up on what you're saying, it's the lack of alacrity continues from administration to administration because, you know, Mayor Chow, as Mayor-elect could have started that task force and said, you know, I'm going to straighten this out. But instead, she's she made comments like, for example, hey, uh, We've got, and look, let me be candid, all right? I'm going to be absolutely candid about where I'm coming from because uh, I'm transparent that way. The new, the now mayor a year ago said, hey, is any out of the blue? I want to meet with you. And I want to learn about enhanced infrastructure finance industry legislation, tax increment financing. We had a Zoom media th meeting 30 minutes. I got the text and we had the Zoom and she gave me homework. Now, I'm tired of working for free. <laughs> and I wanted to get paid for it, which is, you know, all you have to do is folks out there in media, just disclose, just say, hey, look, I did that when I was with Ellie, I was his economic advisor, I was still a Montclarian columnist. Chris Treadway, rest in peace, was the editor of the Montclarian and said, Zinni, all you got to do is right at the bottom, you're economic advisor to the mayor. Case closed. Okay. Not an issue. I said that to Shane. She said, I have a consultant already. The consultant she has, I thought, well, why are you asking me? It was really weird. And then she didn't want me to everybody to tell anybody that we met. Okay? So my point is, with that kind of 
handling of things, we're not, uh, I'm not the only one. We're not moving forward in a proper direction to solving this problem. Um, but my thought is the A's are in Las Vegas. They've hired, they have a gigantic, I broke the story on the February 10th, uh, not gigantic, but it's a six person lobbying team. I called the lobbyists, I haven't got an answer back yet. I'll get one though, trust me that. Um, but they, they don't have one thing. They don't have a guy worth 30 billion. They got a family worth seven. <laughs> and Casey, what do you think about the ability of officials to do anything in Las Vegas? You know, part of me wonders, Zenny, what will happen if they can't pull off Vegas and they can't pull off Oakland. And I'm just hoping it doesn't get to that point. Um, you know, I think a lot of the stuff I've heard about Vegas is, is very similar to what you reported, too, is early on they, they met with the power brokers and the people that matter, but there just wasn't a level of commitment there to inspire any confidence. And now they've gone all in on the lobbying front some several years into this progress uh, process here. So uh, it, it's tough to say. I think that when you see Vegas and you look at what would happen if they built on the Tropicana site, for example, they'd be right next to MGM. They'd be right in the heart of everything. I just don't see those casinos wanting them there. And, and I don't know that the Raiders are really big power brokers down there, but they are there and I'm sure they don't want them there either. Uh, I'm sure that, that Hughes and the, the, the people that own the AAA stadium don't want them there. Uh, and so you start wondering, you know, the, the festival ground site, uh, obviously Ruffin uh, isn't really that interested in them being there either. So at what point do all these interests uh, overcome the lobbying? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, and when I see three sites, like I've said a million times, I, I don't see one site. And you saw this like after the world. Yeah, I, I have to explain something. Uh, Never announced a site. Yeah. I, I have to explain something. When I was laughing, I was immediately recalling when I was at the NFL draft last year in the middle of uh, Las Vegas Boulevard in Flamingo, uh, and I, I said hi to Mark Davis. And then I asked Mark, I said, Mark, uh, can you talk to Dave Cobble? And he, he, he tossed an expletive. <laughs> and not a good one, okay? Um, so, yeah. Let, case, let, yeah, let, yeah. Yeah, let me go back. Well, go ahead, Zenny. I want to go back to something Casey just said. Okay, okay. Casey, you were your, your volume went, I think it went something. There's a uh, buzzing or something going on somewhere. Yeah, you got a buzzing. Um, uh, I think uh, fixed. Yeah, fixed. Yep. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Casey. You're on. I'm not sure at what point I cut out, but I know you caught the Raiders part. What I'm saying is, I'm not sure that there's enough in Vegas, enough power brokers down there right now that actually want them there to overcome uh, however many lobbyists they have down there. I don't know they can overcome that challenge. I, I don't know if I got cut off before I mentioned all the different entities there that probably don't want them in the, in the area. Uh, so I think that's my main concern with them in Vegas. Um, I also find it kind of suspicious to everybody here. Why would Manfred waive the relocation fee? Why would the MLB owners even be okay with that? Like Makes no waiving sense. the relocation Zero. fee? I mean, Zero. no one wants to give away free money. It, it just seems suspicious to me. The, yeah, the, yeah, the other thing that was, that was weird to me is, uh, b beyond the relocation, you have a lot of people saying, "Well, they're just tanking right now to to move the team." They're they I'm like they don't need to. They no. they already have permission to go. So yeah. why would you right. want to tank a team uh, well, and 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 move on with them other than just saving a bunch of money? Uh, well, because people in Vegas right now see what's happening with the A's and they're not inspired to take on that ownership group. You know, I the wouldn't fans. Be either. Well, and, and if you look at what happened a, before the yeah. Niners built their stadium, before the Warriors built their arena, et cetera, et cetera, they had good teams that had everybody fired up and interested and built that support to go into their endeavors. And right now the A's have done the complete opposite. And I think it's, it's, really, it's really hurt the confidence of the, the people. It's hurt the confidence of the people that want this team to stay or want this team to come to Vegas. I mean, people are – all-time low in interest levels in the Oakland A's at the moment. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And you're going to see an NBA team in Vegas before the A's are in Vegas. 
Who is the A's development partner to build a $1.4 to $1.6 billion convertible dome stadium? The kind of ball club they have now with 102 losses. If you're in the hind uh, end of Vegas, no matter what type of entertainment, you're not bringing anybody into your venue. How many years is it going to take them to build the championship team again? And, oh, the Howard Hughes Corporation owns a beautiful ballpark in Summerlin. Uh, called yeah. Las Vegas Ballpark. They sell out many of their games. They have a great organization. And if the A's come, they have to leave. How much is that going to cost? To your point about, oh, we'll just give away a half a billion dollar relocation. For some reason, Major League Baseball is getting in line with the other sports saying we have to be in a place in which legalized gaming is exploding. We need to be there. Well, it's a wow. Thursday night. Wow. The last place team is coming in to play the Oakland A's at 730. How many people are going to be in the Doofus Dome to see that game? <laughs> Not a lot. But also the other you know, issue is if they do go down there and they're a huge success and they're right in the middle of the strip, then all the people aren't going to be at the slots and the tables. And I don't think a lot of casino owners really like that. With the Raiders, you get one game eight times. And that will bring in people for a whole week. It, with baseball, it's it's many, many hours, many days a week where people will not be losing their money in their casinos. You're leaving the sixth largest metro in the United States for the 42nd. You're leaving one of the most diverse marketplaces in this country to one that isn't to a, uh, a working base that's nine to five, meaning they go to work at 9 p.m. and they get off at 5 a.m. How many right. people are going to the games? Right. Wow. It, it's funny, though, is we ask all these why, questions, why but these are the same questions we asked with, with the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> Look what happened. Yeah. I would, because I would, the state gave yeah, them $800 million. True, dollars. true. <laughs> right. It was the free money. And the A's want $500 million, Any? I mean, come on. They're not getting that. Uh, actually, they, there's a way they can do it. Now, the, and I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said that, Casey, because it brings up, a, uh, a complication that I want people to be aware of. Uh, there is There are at least two bills moving their way through the Nevada legislature right now. One of them is called AB 10, which was written uh, November 16th of last year, but it allows tax increment financing to be used for structures that are affordable housing and or transportation related. Now, the question is, why would the A's buy this little uh, you know lobby army of lobbyists, right, for this legislature session. And I believe they're about the business of making their own bill that includes tax increment financing. Because if you start, if you do that, and you combine it with a hotel and convention use, and let's say you come out with a structure that's $2 billion, look, math is math is math. So if I can say it's a 4% rate of growth of assessed value, and I can say it's 45 years in the future, I'm looking at $1 billion Six hundred million uh, million dollars from that period. I don't care where it is located. Is that math works? Okay. So I believe that they're structuring, and I have no other proof other than the fact that they are. They've got these lobbyists there, and they got to be doing something, right? And they are no small potatoes, these fellows and ladies either. All right. But I believe they're structuring or moving towards structuring their own type of legislation to get that five hundred million. And that's one view, right, Casey and everybody. Okay. Here's the other view. The other view is, and they did meet with Stephen Hill, uh, the guy who uh, I pattern my my life. He and Don Doctoroff, as a guy who is in the city planning, these are the kind of guys that I whose jobs I want. You know, I was blessed to work for Elihu and be almost there. Thank you, Elihu. Well, my point is, Stephen Hill is now the president of the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. And there are a number of people who believe that they went, the A's did, and, and Dave went to Stephen to fashion their own version of the Raiders' take from the stadium tax. Now, my friend who's involved in that says that's not happening, which means it was going to uh, talk, but it's not going to happen. And this is a person I've talked to you should know, all right? So, but however, Stephen Hill is still very much in the mix because he is now the czar of tourism for the st for Southern Nevada, arguably. Okay, so they I, I caution everybody uh, to avoid the mistake that I made regarding the Raiders leaving, and it's this: 
NFL and sports organizations have a market. It's almost like a force field around them. They take wherever they go. And we tend to discount that power. But in an internet age, it is more powerful than ever. When I was trying to bring the Super Bowl to Oakland, we lost to Jacksonville in 2000 for the right to host the 2005 game. I calculated that we were losing $25 million in free advertisement money at that point in time. Now that's about $100 million for the Super Bowl that Las Vegas will host or comparatively the World Series, which is close, okay, because it's multiple games, right? So, And then there's the attraction of being there with CEOs and everybody else who just want a city with sports and everything else that goes with it. That's too often discounted by people who use an old way, and I might add a kind of a liberal conservative argument, which really has nothing to do with it, but they don't listen. The bottom line is the markets these organizations carry, including athletics, under the right circumstances, is extremely powerful. I wouldn't discount it in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, I think the situation, well, though, is so one, different between the Raiders well, yep. and the A's. That's the big thing for me. It's just such a different situation. Yeah, I'm sorry, Elohim. I didn't mean to talk over you. Go ahead. Go ahead yeah. Yeah, yeah, look, I think everybody's got the same variation of the same thing. One, um, everything is everybody's saying makes sense. I think Vegas has too many conflicts. You know what the resort fees are now to go to a hotel in Vegas? Uh, they can't even fill yeah. up a mi the minor league stadium in, in, in Vegas. So you got 700,000 people coming to a game. Uh, I don't know if that gets you votes. I don't lobbyists get you vote for a team that's only drawing 700,000 people where they are. Baseball is a train training, training. That, that, that many people going to go in the, in the middle of the week in Vegas to see a baseball game. And not that many people are going to fly into town to see a baseball game. They can see 81 times in their own city. It, there's no logic to me for this. If that was, this was like, a, they didn't have any other team. But they got, um, they got what do they got? They got ice hockey. They got football. Uh, they've got women's basketball. They got so many sports. People want to go to sports game. Hey, they're probably better off in Vegas, going somewhere else to see a baseball game. Flying to L.A. Or, or Oakland to see a game than people fly into Vegas to see a game. At least in my opinion, I would never that's go to a, Vegas to see a baseball game. No, that's a great point, Elihu, because you have concurrently you will have basketball hockey pro football they do have the the xfl i don't know how long this one will last but uh you have xfl and minor league baseball and then major league baseball i'm like plus the numerous concerts and uh other events that are happening you're really starting to dilute your your ability to put butts in the seats um I mean, it's not really a big deal on the weekends, probably, but yeah, in the right. on a weekend. 81 right. baseball games. 81 yeah. baseball games right now uh, with a team that isn't drawing anybody. How quickly will they turn them into champions? Okay, I'm going to yeah. close this out, and I'm going to close out with a big, gigantic question. I'm dying to get your feedback on it. Don't die, Zenny. Don't die. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Um, <laughs> how do we replace these organizations? Because I say we need a sports commission in Oakland. And I say that we need to believe we need to replace the Warriors with a competition competitor across the Bay in Oakland. We need to do the same thing with the A's and we need the same thing with the Raiders and get the NFL back in the Bay Area. What say you all? Mr. Pratt. I think that the NFL is never coming back to Oakland. I think that the NBA is obviously done in Oakland. I think they can do everything they want to do to bring a WNBA team in, but their best hope of that is probably getting two Bay Area WNBA teams because mm. that's going to go through Joe Lacob too because he runs basketball in this market, like it or not. Uh, so I think they got to keep the A's. And I think that the more we talked about Las Vegas, the less I was convinced that they really want to be there. I think it's a quick solution in case Oakland doesn't pan out. I'll leave you with this last thought. I tweeted it the other day. Carlos Correa. Almost got paid more by the Giants than it would take yeah. to secure yeah. Howard Terminal and get the franchise settled for the next 50, 60 plus years. All they need to do, step wow. up, pay or sell. Let's go. Richard, what say you? <laughs> There's a lot of money in this area. 
if they really wanted to do this, they could make it happen, whether it's selling a piece of the team, looking for sponsorship, looking for, for just partnerships in, in the dealing, um, whether it's uh, who, who's going to build the hotel, who's going to build these you know condos. There's money to be made. Um, I, I floated. I, I'm, I'm not a business guy or I am a business guy, but, you know, I don't have an MBA. I don't I'm not a marketing guy, but I've I've, I've come from the 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 um, the world of just grassroots, just guerrilla warfare marketing, uh, whether it was playing in bands and stuff. And you always got to come up with ideas. Why not uh, give naming rights to streets? Just weird stuff like that. I mean, but there's stuff out there. If you really think outside the box, you can really make those those the money. I mean, you could sell bricks to fans. I mean, pe- everybody's done that before. I've got fans that people that are mad about uh, their name being uh, in the championship plaza, you know, for the Raiders, and there's no team that they paid for, you know, their their name to be up on the little plaque. There's just so many ways to get this funding through, and and as well as just you know um, using the legislations that, that are there to, to, to develop, um, they, they could get this done. I, I don't really see the point in dragging this out. Mr. Dolich. Can, can, I, can, I can I ask Andy a question before you speak? Uh, you, nobody Absolutely. commented, maybe because nobody thinks I'm, I'm in my right mind, about them going to uh, Nashville. I mean, uh, I know that Dave Stewart is talking to people in Nashville uh, it's a yes. great market, got a, bit, a great region. They're hungry for a baseball team. I think baseball would be a great sport in Nashville. Why don't any of that's an option? Uh, well, it is It is an option, L.U., and I speak to Dave, and Dave, you know, for whatever reason, we won't go into it now, uh, you know, Mr. Bobbitt and his group, the African-American Sports and Entertainment Group, they got the option. Right. Dave supposedly had more money in the group. He said, see you later. I'm going to Nashville. He's built right. that group in Nashville. They have a very real possibility. I would say the answer to Zenny's question is pretty simple. When Zenny breaks the story that there is a serious meeting between Rob Manfred, the mayor, the city council, Mike Jacob, John Fisher, and those and and at least one or two major business entities in Oakland to really sit down and not to have something that's just, oh, here's how we did. We had a wonderful meeting, but really talk through this strategically. Then this is going to continue and opening night at uh, 66th Avenue will be there this year, next year, and we'll see what happens with the lease. But until there is actionable teamwork, leadership and trust, we will continue to have this Groundhog Day of kick in the gut uh, for what's going on in Oakland. And championships, Hall of Famers, millions of fans, 78 million A's fans have come through those gates. Don't tell me that can't happen again. Uh, but, you know, that's okay. just that's just my deal. Elihu, batter up. You're on. Well, I'm going to and all you guys know a lot, and you very intelligent analysis. Um, like I said, I think the, the real wild factor that nobody knows because they're not talking is the Fisher family. You know, they're sitting back there, like they're watching some kind of circus, and they're waiting to see if the lion's going to eat the bears. Or <laughs> hey, this is interesting. You know, we got an asset. Um, we don't know how much it's worth, and we're going to see who the highest bidder is. What they want to do with the team? Do they want to build? Stadium. I don't believe the Fisher Stadium. I don't think they have that level of gut. I don't think they have that inclination to invest that kind of money or take that kind of economic risk. So, you know, I don't think the Fisher Farm is real. They own the team. That's the reality. What they want to do with it, I think that's the question. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Casey and I want to, Casey, I want to give you a round of applause because uh, <laughs> a lot of great work. Yes. And no, I mean, it's great work, uh, and uh, it's great to to have a, a person who represents who really is, I think, the second coming of Larry Beal. That's how I see you. And I, <laughs> is Larry watching this? <laughs> like, he's he's about to anchor the four o'clock hey, news, and he just texted me. He just texted me and said Shane Cow is going to be on that show. So uh, I texted him back, ask about Howard Terminal, ask about the MLB commissioner. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Stay tuned. Let's break that meeting. We want that meeting to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, but 
but this is wow. great because and we we're just is going to be Casey and I talking. And but I thought about it. I, I love the fact that I know these gentlemen and you know ladies and everybody else. And I thought, you know, why not? Why not do it a Delphi? Get it together and have fun and 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 and, and give something that. All of you want Ocean to share. is a miraculous city that has a high level of low self-esteem, and it's time to Thank blow you. that up. Thank um, you. And incidentally, you. I would just say go to Amazon.com and look at this book that Dave Newhouse and I have written uh, ah. that chronicles uh -oh. all this stuff. April 11th, it comes out. Uh, it's called Goodbye, Oakland, and I hope our title is absolutely wrong as it relates to the AIDS. Is Ellie oh, in it? Yeah. Is Ellie uh, in it? I'm no, not allowed to speak. No, I want to read. Yeah. Right, no, no, no. I, I don't even care about. Like, I want to read the book. The book. The buy the book. Is, buy the book. How do, how do I buy a signed copy? No, I'm gonna buy. Yeah, I'm, we got I'm, it. Buy the book. We're gonna be gotta, talking gotta, about this for a while. I, this I isn't the last time. All right. Yeah. So here's what here's what I'm gonna end on. Then I think Oakland no, is I the plan. Is Oakland is the plan. Las Vegas is the backup plan. And Andy, when they build Howard Terminal, I want to write the book with you. All right. I want to be the the other guy on there. All right. Okay, and I will introduce you to Ted Howard, who's a friend of mine and the great grandson of the actual Howard. And Ted and I worked in soccer, so go figure, right? <laughs> Ellie, you're going to wow, say something. Wow, Ellie. That's not me. Ellie, did you have something you wanted to say, boss, before we play till it clear out? Did you? you, you know, saying I, first something? of all, I mean, it's been incredible. It's been incredible conversation. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm finished. I think it's an incredible conversation. Everybody here has perspective and expertise. And particularly from a fan, because ultimately, I think the fans are voting with their TV and their feet. And I, like I said, I have no desire to go see the A's. I think it's pitiful to watch a minor league team under a professional job. It's just, it's like ownership. Not we saw to it, right? In their you, you sat there and it. saw it. You saw it. You saw yeah. these guys win champions. Well, gentlemen, I, I want to thank exactly. everybody again. We had to do this again. We had, we had to do this again and uh, and get Larry for for measure and, and make it a lot of fun. And um, I mean, why not? You know, I think that it's this kind of conversation in this way that will help move things along. So, gentlemen, Richard. Richard, when an elephant decides to move in the right direction, nothing can stop him. So you just keep that A's elephant moving in the right direction. <laughs> oh, that was, that was a good quote. Hey, Richard, thank you for being our star vlogger. I'm, I'm here, I, I want to make All right. Yeah, go ahead, Ellie. What, what's going on? Thank you, guys. No, no. I, hey, thank I, you, Ellie. I, I, I'm going to borrow Andy's. It's a, it's a good line. Who's going to stop the elephant? <laughs> Gotcha. Gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I'm going into marketing when I grow up. Now the background. Thank you. Hey, hey folks, subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube. Bookmark OaklandNewsNowBlog.com. And for the NFL Combine, we have been credentialed for two credentials. First time, Bill Carroll be our star. I'm producer. Zenny62.com. Really excited. Thank you, National Football League. Folks, stick around. Everybody be safe. Cheech. Be safe. About that. As yeah. I was saying, Thanks, God. Andy. <laughs>